Welcome to the Motaiga Golf Club, venue of the Magical Kenya Open presented by APSA. This is day three of the Kenya Open and I am making this presentation from the bridge that connects the first nine of Motaiga Golf Club to the second nine of the Motaiga Golf Club. We came here and spoke to the tournament director, Patrick Obath, who spoke to us about the changes that the Motaiga Golf Club has had to go through to enable them to host this DP World Tour event. Coming back this year, we had to revisit the agronomy and also really look at well at all the greens, how they have been done. And uh, we then prepared a program from November last year where they have been following up. Um, and we had to ramp up the program in, uh, in February because it wasn't taking up as quickly as we expected. I also spoke to Patrick Obath about the performance generally on the entire field, but also specifically on the Kenyans who are participating here. I also asked him whether the performance by Kifogo Joroge, who has done exceptionally well, sends a signal for the future of Kenyans at the Kenya Open. This is the future of Kenya. An 18-year-old, this is the first time we've had an 18-year-old make the cut in a tournament as a Kenyan. And I think what you've got to remember is he came in as a junior addition, not an elite pro. And being a junior, that for us is a very strong signal that the development of golf in this country is beginning to take place very well. The problem with, uh, that our Kenyans have faced is the ability to adjust from one course to the next instantly. And if you know that a lot of the European players, they arrive three or four days before the event, they go and do a practice range, and once they've done their practice, then effectively you're finding that they have adjusted to the course. And I believe that our local players need to get into that kind of mental situation whereby they adjust their game, and they are fine adjustments. They're not big ones. Our key partner obviously is the government of Kenya, the Ministry of Sports and the Sports uh, Development Fund, who have funded the prize money for this particular event. Um, the other partner we've had is um, ABSA, who has been with us as well for a much longer time, and they're also coming as a presenting partner. And then finally, the other major partner we have is EABL, and EABL has come in in a big way. When we moved to a European Tour event in 2019, one of the things that we wanted to do was to encourage Kenyans to come and watch. And the easiest way to do that was to create a big village. And EABL uh, delivered, they came in and presented us with a great village. And that actually drew a lot of people to the course, at least to listen and hear about golf, even if not to follow it. And this year, we have a village that is even bigger and better than it was before. A lot of people are coming in. And for that, we are grateful to EABL for making it possible for us to connect golf with Kenyans in an atmosphere where they are not really happy to be stressed about going to watch golf. So it was a pretty uh, tough day on the golf course, or maybe I should say a mixed day. We had some players like Ewen Ferguson who went 500 gross today. We had Marcus Kinhalt who is 7 under. Marty Schmid is also 7 under. Ewen Ferguson leads at 14 under. Two players are tied, I should move from China and Marcus Kinhalt tied at 10 under. You've got three players, four players at nine under par. But the focus of the Kenyan gallery was on Kifogo Joroge, who has won the hearts of the Kenyans. He's not had a very good day on the golf course, two over grass. But when we spoke to him and his caddy, Bo Shearer, Bo said this was not a very bad round. The conditions were tough. Two over was not very, very bad. This is what they had to say. Uh, yes, I mean, he's had... Uh a good run of three tournaments in uh, South Africa, so the preparation was good. And uh, once we knew that he was playing the Kenya Open, we set our sights on just being ready for it and ensuring that we peak at the right time. Uh, no, no, I, st I, I want to dig very deep. I, I really want to have a, a good round tomorrow, try and enjoy it. Hopefully I can go low. You're probably going to be the most popular man on this golf course. You're probably going to have twice the gallery today. Does that affect the way you play? No, uh, it, it, no, not really. It, it, it can. Actually, it does because uh, they hype me up a bit. Bo, how do you keep the young man steady on, on difficult shots? Uh, just asking him who his best rapper is, and then him, uh, you know, dropping some lines for me. Uh, yeah, so it was fun. Uh, I got to know that he can he can actually rap out there. When do you turn pro? We've obviously seen what you're made of. No pressure. Uh, not not for a few years. Uh, I don't think you'll see me as a pro anytime soon. Shout out to my guy, Lil Jew. Cheers. We had an opportunity to speak to Tegla Lorupe, one of our veteran athletes, former marathon world champion, 
globally acclaimed peace ambassador UN uh, has been a UN ambassador um, has advocated for peace we met on the golf course today and asked her some questions around the mental aptitude the perhaps the correlation between golf and athletics and what perhaps athletes can teach golfers and perhaps what golfers can teach athletes have you, have you been on a, on a golf course in Kenya no before? really no so you've never attended a, a golf tournament? You haven't come to watch Indiza no. or, or Lejirma? Yeah, because you leave me outside there. <laughs> so now I think I, I, will, uh, I will train because I have uh, Berlin, I have Evelyn, I have Captain, so they have to be my coaches. Of course, we will, we will start with you. What can they borrow from you? What I can you teach I them? Think, I think first of all, uh, you need to do uh, running uh, every morning before you, or I don't know what they do, but they have to do a lot of long run so that you have endurance and when you have endurance you don't get tired so you're already mentally uh, strong you are doing and a lot so of work in peace yes. are you still doing that can you uh, tell us about that sure i'm still uh, doing that that one i i do i support the refugees and at the same time i we organize peace events that uh, unite people together we were together in in, in Takwell, and uh, i think we need to go back uh, to open uh, that chapter again. Thank you very much. Take care of your weekday. And when are you going to be my coach? Next week? Next week. <laughs> <laughs> One of the players who was absolutely amazing today was Scott Jemison. He had seven buddies through eight holes. He's now right up there with the big boys. He's seven under, seven under for the tournament from level pass. So he just made the cut, went deep today, moved many paces up, has a chance tomorrow we sought his caddy and spoke to his caddy about what it took for scott jemison to actually go deep today and this is what the caddy had to say so tell us what's in your bag okay we start with uh, 58 low wedge yeah that goes about 100 yards um then you get two gap wedges uh, 50 and the 44 and then 46 the pitching wedge yeah and then we're 987 546 driver and three wood you only have two woods in the bar yeah this week usually we carry the five wood and um, but this week we need uh, uh, an iron off the tee to get the ball running about 250 yards rather up in there yeah he likes to get it low so you you had about seven bodies in eight holes yes what what were the clubs that really worked there um, he drove it good, good driving, put it in good position off the tee to attack the pin. Um, and it was, a, it was a lot of wedges, the wedges were good today, yeah. very strong. Very strong. Yes, uh, gave you a lot of good chances. Are you enjoying your time in Kenya? Love it, it's brilliant. Is it your first time? It is my very first time, yeah. Is it the first time for, for Scott? Jimmy? No, he's played here before, he's played 10, here years ago. 10 years ago. Um, yeah, the altitude, I, f I can feel it. Uh, yeah. Nobody prepares you. Yeah. The ninth hole, I have to go forward. Yes. Or else I'm 40 yards behind. <laughs> I thought the people, for the first time being here, was amazing. But I was told before the people are so friendly, uh, hospitable. Yeah, I couldn't say a bad word. Amazing. Probably the best I've been to in Africa, actually. So that is it for day three at the 2022 Magical Kenya Open presented by APSA. Tomorrow is the final round. The 75 players still in the field will be battling for a share of the 200 plus million on offer here. The top winner will take over 30 million shillings. The guys in contention, Ewan Ferguson on 14 under, Marcus Kinhalt on 10 under in the company of Ashun Wu from China. We've got four players on 9 under par, Marty Schmid, David Horsey, Jose Campillo, Garcia Rodriguez. They are at nine under par. They will be chasing Ewen Ferguson. Our own Kenyan, Jaroga Gifogo, already has the amateur silver salva in his hands. He will be looking to just better his performance, probably go under. He's currently tied in 33rd place, 10 shots of the lead. He has promised to try and go low. Tomorrow is the final day of the 2022 Magical Kenya Open. See you there.